1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, I've been wanting um, to preach this message to you since the moment your pastor asked me to come. This message is for your church. It's called Preparing for Greater Things. Absolutely. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, So Elijah went and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elijah was plowing with the 12th team. Elisha went over to him, threw his cloak across his shoulders, and then he walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye. Then I will go with you. Elijah replied, Go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his own oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. You may be seated today. I am so excited that I get to talk to you about preparing for greater things. You cannot be in this church and sense the future of this church. You could go into a church and sense what God's doing in it. It's not difficult. But in this church, you can see there are young leaders ready to become who they've been called to be. It is evident that this church carries with it a generational blessing. That it transcends the now to the next. And today I want to talk to you about this. Because every church will experience a divine moment where they have to enter in and just abandon everything so that they can enter in to their next. No one goes to their next without abandoning something. Here in this story, Elisha was just plowing in the field, doing his due, working away. And then God drops something on him called a mantle. And he's wise enough to know what's come upon me is greater than what I'm doing right now. You'll never get to your next until you believe that the atmosphere that you're in is greater than what you're doing during the day. And all of a sudden, he realizes a mantle's been dropped on my life. And Elijah walks away and says, deal with it. Figure out what I just did to you. Figure out what God's trying to tell you. See, whenever there's a prophetic atmosphere, there will always be a transfer of anointing. There'll always be a need for an Elisha because you have an Elijah here. And so as Pastor Benny is praying for people, I can just sense and see some of you are just drawing in and, and saying, God, I want that. I don't know how to explain it, but I want that. I want to pray for people and see miracles. I want to call people out and see truth. I want to see breakthroughs happen, not at the altar call, but in the midst of the worship service. I want to know that I've got breakthrough power. And I'm just, I'm raising my voice because we can do that here. There's some churches I've got to like tone it down and stuff, but we don't have to tone it down here tonight. I genuinely believe if you'll open your heart today and hear what God will say to you, that some of you, you're being positioned to be next. That's what this whole story is about. It's about being next. I want you to write some things down about how to prepare for greater things. Number one, greater things happen when you believe you're anointed to accomplish greater things. You've got to believe you're anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Say it again. Say it like you mean it. You know, when I began to preach, I didn't understand the anointing of God. I just, you know, would just go preach. In Santa Barbara, when I got saved, I was the city disc jockey. I was on a radio station, and I picked up a flyer on the ground. And I went to this small church, and before I went to church, you know, you know, now people want me to go preach for them. But the way I went to church was a little different, a little unorthodox. So before I went to my first Christian church service, I did two things. I snorted a half a gram of cocaine, and I prayed a prayer. I'm 17 years old, I'm a disc jockey, and that's just how I was. And I just figured, go high everywhere you go. So you guys don't understand that here in Vegas. You're all well-conditioned, well-people, and I understand that. That's how I went to church. 
So my first church service, I walk in and I'm high. And I'm sitting there and this guy is preaching about Jesus. I was a Catholic. I was an altar boy. I heard about Jesus. But for the first time I heard the gospel preached. He said that Jesus died for me so that I could rise again and be a new person. And when I prayed and I said, God, if you could change my life, I'll give it to you. That night, not only did I get saved, I was anointed for something greater. See, you've got to believe that when you got saved, you were anointed for something greater. I don't know what you were before you got here, but you're anointed for something greater. You've got to believe that what you went through with him and her is just preparation because you're anointed for something greater. And so I would take my turntables, my 1200s, out to the street. I'm, I'm like 18 years old, and I'm on the streets of Santa Barbara mixing music and preaching my guts out because I want everyone to feel what I feel. And then someone told me, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? I couldn't explain it with words, but now I understand what happened. I got touched by the power of God. Like I got anointed by the Holy Spirit, and I couldn't shut up. I couldn't stop preaching. And I'm not just excited today because I'm Latin. I'm excited because I'm still passionate of why I was chosen, why I was redeemed. He could have left me to die, but he touched me and he anointed me. He needed me. He needed me. I was needed. And, and Elijah is just plowing. He's working. And God comes by and just tells him, I need you. Touch the person next to you and say, God needs you. But you've got to believe this. The Bible says the anointing you received from Christ lives in you. You don't need anyone to teach you something else. Instead, Christ's anointing teaches you about everything. That's referring to your identity. That doesn't give you the permission to tell your pastor, I don't need to be taught. What it says is that the anointing will teach you who you really are. You know the number one crime in America? You know what it is? It's identity theft. If you didn't know that, Google it. The number one crime of America is people be ripping off other people's identity because they don't even know who they are. Or they want to be someone else. Do you know what the number one crime in churches is? Spiritual identity theft. The devil be stealing people's calling, anointing, gifting. What? Come on, somebody. Making them feel like they don't know who they are. That's why the Bible says the anointing will teach you who you are. Look at this next verse. 2 Kings 8.13. Hazio responded, How can a nobody like me ever accomplish such great things? I think sometimes this is the way we feel about ourselves. You know, when I got saved, I never thought I'd be a preacher. I mean, no one told me, you're going to be a preacher. You're going to pastor one of the fastest growing churches in America. You're going to go around. No. No, no, I didn't think that anyone would consider me because I was like this. I didn't think I could accomplish anything great because my past was so bad because I was the type of person that I didn't think God wanted or God didn't want to do anything with. I was just glad I was saved. But I had to learn that I was anointed for something else. And if you're not careful, you'll take on this mindset that, you know, you can't accomplish anything great. And that's not true. You have God in you. God is for you. God is working with you. God is right beside you. And everywhere you go, he's going with you. You've got to go to work boldly. You've got to go to school boldly. You've got to do life boldly. you just got to go for it. And quit worrying about what they're going to say, what they're going to do. Be the best you. You know why? Because the anointing is on you, not someone else you're trying to be. Greater things happen when you believe you're anointed to accomplish greater things. Number two, greater things happen when you get exposed to what is next in your life. When Elijah went over to him and, and, and threw his cloak across his shoulders and walked away, literally what he was doing was he was revealing to him, this is your next if you want it. You know, whenever God brings you into your next, pick up on this, he'll always send a relationship that reflects what your next will be. When I met your pastor, my life changed. And he didn't bring me here to say this. I would say this regardless. When I met Pastor Benny Perez, my life changed. Tim Story told me, Sergio, you have to meet this guy, Benny Perez. Hello, who doesn't know him? 
And he said, I'm going to hook you up. We're guys are going to talk. When I met him and he sat down with me and he started talking to me, my wife told me, you need to develop a relationship with him. How many of you know when your wife asks you to do something? Happy wife, happy life. And I want you to know that when I met him, my life entered into a new dimension. Sometimes you can have someone in front of you every week and not even realize what you have. You start looking for the next or somebody else or, oh, maybe this person's got it or this new thing that's happening has got it. The truth is, if you can't value the mantle God's been trying to put on you every week here, I don't care where else you go. If you can't get it here, you ain't going to get it there. Honor the mantle. But you got to get exposed to what's next in your life. And you get exposed by allowing God to show you the relationships he's bringing in your life. Sometimes God will send you people in the church that are your next. And they're like the next level of your marriage. The next level of your business. The next level of who you're supposed to be. Like I want to be close to Benny Perez. You're not ready for that yet. you got to get close to his leaders. Because if you get close to his leaders, then you're going to be prepared. Because the closer you get to the anointing, the closer you get to who he is, the greater the demand God will make on you. Like you can't be close. Like when Elijah dropped that mantle on him, he said, you better go figure this out because your life is about to change. This guy got so tripped up by the anointing, he kissed his parents goodbye. He burned his oxen. He said, I'm done. What happened? He understood because he got exposed to what is next. Like once you know, you can't go back. Number three, greater things happen when you align yourself with people who see the greatness of God in you. Elijah returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the carne asada to the townspeople. Y'all don't know about carne asada. Here, you come to San Diego, and I will take you to carne asada taquitos that you will do. will be like, that's it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> and they all ate. And he went with Elijah as his assistant. Let me explain this to you. Greater things happen when you start aligning yourself with people who right now see the greatness of God in you. When you come to church every week and pastors preaching or whoever is preaching, the reason why some can get the message and leave totally changed is because they align themselves with what the speaker is saying. See, you can come here and you can be in the atmosphere, but the atmosphere won't change you. See, Elijah knew, I got to hang out with Elijah. So he leaves to go be with him because something about Elijah, Elijah saw something in him that his father didn't see, his mother didn't see, no one else saw. And sometimes in church, your pastor is preaching, he's ministered to you, he's speaking to the very core of who you are because he knows who you're supposed to be. But you've got to align yourself. You've got to say, okay, be my prophet, be my man of God, speak into me. And as a result, your relationships will align. Be careful when you get around people that make you second guess something you were once convinced of. Wow. And you know you're with the wrong people when they make you second guess something you were once convinced of. Like I love my church. I love this church. But somebody somewhere starts dropping some crazy thought in you and now you're second guessing something you were once convinced of. The devil is a liar. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, if you're not careful, you're going to miss your assignment because of lack of alignment. You have no idea that happens. Sergio Del Amor is just a gardener from Santa Barbara, an ex-cholo. That's really all I am. No, really, honestly. I'm from a gang. I was a cholo, a lowrider, skateboarder, was into drugs. I was a disc jockey, came from a migrant family. Yes, right now, Sergio Del Amor is assumedly something, but let me tell you something. I align myself with the best people 
And sometimes you got to humble yourself and realize this person is beyond you. Like when I get around your pastor, I sit and listen. Why? Because the wisdom that comes from him, just in the simplest things, like I'm with him. I was only with him for two hours. And I'm like, honey, I need to go home and repent. This guy is dropping. He doesn't even know what he's saying. I mean, I'm just eating like food together. And I'm like, that's it. I suck. I don't know anything. When you align yourself with people who see the greatness of God in you, this is what will happen. God will trust you with something greater than yourself. But you've got to burn something. Some of you, you've got to burn, not oxen, but burn some relationships. I'm just telling you, don't blow it on the border of your breakthrough. Greater things happen when you align yourself with people that see the greatness of God in you. Number four, greater things happen when you increase your response speed to the Holy Spirit. Elisha left the oxen there, and what did he do? Ran after Elijah. He ran after him. And the Bible says, first let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elisha said, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. You know, the best thing, to find, if you really want to know who you have around you, give them an assignment and see how quickly they complete it. See, anyone who owns a business understands this. It's not the most talented. It's not even the most edumacated. It's not the person. <laughs> <laughs> it's the person who knows how to respond quickly. You know, the only reason why I think God would be willing to use me is because I'm crazy enough to just go for it. Like, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Here is Elisha. He's obviously wealthy. He's got 12 oxen, people. He's not just a guy chilling at McDonald's. He has 12 oxen. So if you understand, it's an agricultural culture, and you don't just have 12 oxen, and you don't just burn 12 oxen and feed the city. He obviously had wealth. He obviously was someone significant in the community, but he was smart enough to run after his next because he knew he was done with his now. Some of you, the reason why you can't get into your next is because you're still sitting on your now. You need to start running after your next. He's told you what to do. He's told you what to believe. He's told you what you need to be. But there you are, just sitting and waiting. The Bible says he ran. He just ran. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 24, 5, it says, go to all the cities of Judah, collect offerings for the building fund so that we can maintain the temple in good repair. Get at it right away. Don't delay. But the Levites took their time. See, God looks at your response speed. He'll just drop something on you, and he'll step back and say, are you going to do it? See, you might not think, that, well, I'm just, I don't have the look. I don't have the relationships yet. But let me tell you, if you have a response that inspires God, he'll move you up to the front. Greater things happen when you increase your response speed to the Holy Spirit. You've heard this before, and I'll, t I'll say this again. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. The moment you're supposed to obey is the moment that God asked you to do it. If you do it later, it is now delayed obedience. And delayed obedience is still disobedience. This is the reason why so many people can't go into their next, but you're different. I can sense it in this room. You're so hungry for your next. You're like ready for your next. You've been now. You've been then now, but you want your next. Well, get ready because greater things are going to happen when you just, listen, some of you, it's not much faster you have to go. You just have to take another step. You just have to get there a little earlier. You just have to commit a little sooner. You just have to go a little. It's not a lot you have to do. It's just a little adjustment, and you'll be there. Number five, let me close with this. How to prepare for greater things. Greater things happen when you borrow the faith of others until you possess your own. 
Greater things happen when you borrow the faith of others until you possess your own. Elijah was, wasn't too proud to beg. The Bible says Elijah picked up Elijah's coat. He picked up his bomber jacket, which had fallen when he was taken up to heaven. And then Elijah returned to the bank of the Jordan River, and he struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elijah went across. Elijah knew that he had to borrow something from Elijah in order to discover his next. Sometimes you don't have it in you and you have to borrow it from someone. Like I have daughters, okay? I have six daughters and okay. Okay, just, let's just start right there. Let's just start right there. So I've got six daughters, okay? So I grew up watching my daughters go into my wife's closet and go into each other's closet. The guys don't do that. Like guys don't walk into each other's closet and take each other's shirts like, fool, what are you doing? But women are like, hey, can I borrow those heels? Hey, can I borrow that dress? Hey, can I borrow that blouse? And there's no shame to their game. They're like, oh, no, this is good. This is good. My daughter the other day was wearing my bomber jacket. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're crazy. That's not right. She goes, I don't care, Dad. I liked it. And I needed it. Here's the point. Sometimes when you don't have your own, you've got to borrow it from someone else until you can get your own. Like you're going on a date. You ain't got no car? Borrow someone's car. <laughs> Faith it until you make it. So you've got to learn how to work you. And you've got to borrow what you don't have until you can get your own. Because eventually you'll be like, oh, hold on. I feel comfortable in this now. I feel comfortable in this. Here, let me give it back to you because I'm going to go get my own now. Elijah he says, I need that cloak. I need that cloak. So he borrows the cloak. He ain't, no, he ain't proud. He says, I don't care. I need that thing. But that is the only time Elisha ever used his cloak. There was in another situation or circumstance where he needed his cloak. Why? All he needed to do was borrow Elijah's faith once. And after he borrowed it, he God used him. He said, okay, I've got my own swag. I've got my own flow. I've got my, I know who I need to be. I know who I, what I can do. Thank you for what you borrowed me. Here it's back. I've got my own. Let's go. And sometimes what happens is that we're so proud and we don't want to ask for help. We don't want to take and draw from someone else because like, well, I don't want to ask you because if I ask you, then they're going to know that I asked you. Who cares? Borrow it. Borrow their faith. Borrow their victory. Borrow their joy. Borrow their love. Borrow their hope. But come on, somebody. If you ain't got it, go out there and borrow it. 